So we're, we're talking about mostly foundations. And in Texas, our soils are studied all over the world because they are what we call highly expansive clay. And clay soils are made up of very tiny little particles. And when, they, when our soils get wet, they tend to expand. Kind of like a sponge. Just like a sponge. Okay. And when they dry out, they shrink. And, and so when we talk about foundation movement, what we're talking about is the moisture content in the soils are changing, drying or wetting, and that's causing the foundation to move. And so that's, that's the majority of our work in this area. Okay. So what I'm hearing you say is if it is a diagonal crack, it's probably from a dry soil. And if Could it's be. a horizontal crack, it's from heaving, that's from water. Could be. Yes. Okay. That, that's the general idea. Okay. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about what heaving is. Because okay. a lot of people don't know anything about heaving. That's There's right. any foundation movement, they think that the foundation failed and is cracked. Um, Everybody kind of tends to say settlement. Right. But in my experience, homes that are new, like homes that are within about the first 10 years, what we're noticing is that the majority of those homes suffer from upheaval where a portion of the home actually moves upward. And again, what you were talking about with clay, it means that there's more moisture, yep. which means that it's moving and it's raising mm -hmm. the property in that location. Most of the time, that is because when the builder builds the new home, we plant the landscaping and the grass and we, and we extend the downspouts down and, and we tend to overwater our landscaping and grass and then the, the water from the downspouts come down and they wet previously dry soils. So where the soils were drier, we wet them with our landscaping and that causes the soils to swell. And that is a, a, a large contributor to the upheaval. Uh, the, the upheaval problem is a lot different than the settlement problem. So is there something you can do if your home has heaving? I guess locate the water and reduce that amount of water. That would be the first step, but it's more painful than that. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. With, you know, with settlement, if, if the foundation settles, we can just peer it up. But we can't lower the foundation if it's heaving. And there are a variety of ways to lower a foundation, but they're unpredictable. So, for example, we can reduce the water. And when we do that, you know, we're, we're affecting the soil moisture content, which could take years. It, okay. it could take five years for that soil to dry out enough to actually reconsolidate. So if there were some things we could do to speed it up, that's a benefit. For example, I it may be controversial in the engineering world, but I've, I've recommended to plant red tip petunia bushes around the perimeter if it's heaved up. And my thinking is red tip petunia bushes are known to drink a lot of water. Kind of like a cypress tree too. They're right. like little yeah. straws. And, yeah. I mean, they drink a lot. And, and so I feel like they, they would dry out the soils quickly. Have that, you had success with that? I have had one success with that. <laughs> but that's mostly because people are, seem to be reluctant to try it. They right. don't like the look of red tips, that, that it messes up their landscaping. But it's actually a good thought. They would rather have a, a quick fix. But the problem is the quick fix, if you have a foundation that's upheaved, the only way to level it is to lift the entire house up to match it. And that's painful because the low side really wasn't moving, and now we're going to be lifting it. Altering it when there wasn't a problem. Yeah. So there's damage to plumbing and it, just doorways. Everything gets to be a mess. So upheaval is a big problem. So it's important to definitely watch your house, make sure that the watering is consistent in all areas, um, but... I like, I like the way you said consistent. I wish I could get more agents to be knowledgeable enough to say it that way, because 
we've all been programmed to say, what are your foundation? You've, we've heard it a hundred times. What are your foundation? What are your foundation? But really, that's an over-prescribed thing. Right. Right. That's like the doctor, eat good and sleep right, you know? Right, right. Watering your foundation can really be a detriment for a new home if you don't water correctly. And so you need to know what you're doing. One of the little tests that I use is called the moist and delicious test. Okay. Tell okay. me about that. That sounds okay. interesting. <laughs> The moist and delicious test. If, if you walk around your foundation and you put your finger in the dirt, if it's moist and delicious, you've got enough water. Okay. If it's dry and cracky and nasty like my cookies, <laughs> you need water. So if it has lines that you could stick a coin That's in, it. then... That's right. And those soils, you'll, they'll just be dry and hard and nasty. Generally, I wish people would say more something more like, just water enough to keep your grass happy. Okay. Not too much, not That's too right. little, and then stay consistent That's with right. that. If you've got a dry area over here where your grass is dying out and it's dry and nasty, you got to put some water on that. Maybe trim the trees a little bit to let some sunlight come in so you can water your grass. Because your foundation is going to be suffering from That's that. That's right. Well, we talked about heaving, so let's talk about the settlement part. Okay and what's actually needed for piers. Yep, so settlement, we have more settlement issues on older homes. And there's two reasons for that, a couple of reasons for that. Um, in most of this area, builders, when they come into a piece of land to develop the lot, the land, they'll cut the streets down low and they'll take that dirt and they'll pile it up onto the lots to level the lot and then they'll maybe pack it down a little bit usually not well mm -hmm. enough right and then they'll build the house and then they'll plant two little cute little Bradford pear trees right in the front yard right and they're really cute when they're little right those will tend to have an effect at about year 12 so when they've gotten mature that's right like they're like teenagers they're they have voracious appetites those trees drink water like crazy see i didn't know that you just taught me something else new today i didn't know bradford pears oh, drink trees. a lot of water they do and at about the 12 year mark they're drinking about 500 gallons a day wow combined with the front of the house is on that fill material that wasn't really well compacted. Right, okay. And when that tree drinks that water, remember the sponge, mm -hmm. it gets shrinkier and shrinkier. They consolidate. And the, the foundation gets more dried out. That's right. Now, that's kind of where the water your foundation concept came into being. Is what they meant was water your foundation between those trees and what you're doing is you're replenishing the water that the tree is drinking. That's what you're doing. Okay. It's not the physical root we're concerned about. People will say that they see roots. It's the water they drink. That's the problem. Uh -huh. And so when okay. you say water your foundation, focus on areas around trees, on the hot side, the west side of the lot that dries okay. out quickly. Focus on those areas that dry out. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to view other helpful tips, click here. If you would like to view a neighborhood we specialize in, click here. And to subscribe and stay updated, click on the circle below. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.